Well, thank you so much, and uh, I appreciate being back. Um, this is kind of my second go around um, in terms of working and talking to you guys. Uh, I'm, I'm really excited about the opportunity to kind of present to you guys a couple pieces of the demo itself. Um, we're going to talk about some stuff that's physically in production today. Um, nope, I'm not a product manager, uh, but working with the Hortonworks team over the last two and a half years, we were able to design some cool stuff in terms of setting us up a little bit different from the competitors that are out there today. The nice thing about what we're trying to go do, there's a couple pieces in the demo that's going to be shown really for the first time that has some features that are protect around safe harbor notice. So I just want to make sure we can kind of get that out of the way itself. So where was the problem? Remember last year we talked a lot about density and capability and capacity in the network itself. I'm finally able to release the code name of the project that actually has set us up. The project was called Harmony. The harmonization enables us to actually redo the existing supply chain, particularly around freight movement itself. Yes, that strength of that human being, the reason why I'm up here today is I actually lost the arm wrestling contest with Arun, he beat me, and so now the tremble strength of that guy actually enables me to come back up here and actually show you guys a good demo of that. But the thing for me that we've done is actually we started looking at brand new opportunities. Harmony is about an ecosystem, it's not about a product. It's about the enablement to transform the way that we're currently doing the industry today not disrupting something, but revolutionizing something, particularly around the supply chain. When I started looking at the supply chain, last year when I presented you guys the demographics, we stayed within the boundaries within those arrows. That was a total misread by myself and my data science team to actually look at the capabilities that the data framework that was actually shown this morning is actually what we had migrated to you're going to hear the new concept around blockchain. And, and I do appreciate that. We had a phenomenal audience this morning in which we demoed some of the pieces in more in depth. And there's another file on tomorrow actually done by Donnie and Krishna, who are actually going to walk through the Kafka and the uh, implementations of the NiFi capabilities. But the produce supply chain is so critical. What we discovered was over 19 separate indicators within the supply chains from retail, from the capabilities of medical field. This one is the produce. You have heard the concept from the opportunities to look at the farm, farm into the fork capability. This is that diagram. This is the opportunity to do complete traceability. I picked one of our vendors tonight. You've had a great Budweiser and you had some Michelobes. We're actually going to see the lock-in between a blockchain enablement and a complete traceability from the time you produce that contract, which has over a 99% manually capabilities today in supply chain, to a brand new traceability within going down to the SKU level of what's physically on the truck itself. The IoT sensors become critical. Why are we doing this? Because we owe it to ourselves. What I'm going to demonstrate particularly, and I wish I had the example and the time to show you the egg analogy, over 30 individuals die of egg salmonella poison per year. 79 deaths actually physically occur in terms of over the last 15, 20 years um, with the results of not being able to, to track, detect, and understand the whole process within the supply chain, particularly for eggs itself. This is Aunt Sally. Aunt Sally now can go to Costco and actually scan in the type of the strawberries that she's actually going to go purchase, track the opportunities of when it left the, the uh, farm, where it went, the temperature and degrees of that product, and more importantly, when did it physically arrive inside of Costco today. So what are we looking at? What I wanted to show you really quickly as we go through the deck itself is a lot of the different transparencies in the trust that currently happen today. Things around the detention problem, boarding crossing issues, things around onboarding the carrier processes to quickly identify individuals in insurance claims. The blockchain really set a pus apart because we were able to follow the data framework that enables us to get into this brand new type of technology, solving some of these industry capabilities. If this doesn't look identical or a little bit close to what was presented this morning, this is our enterprise architect capability. What you see here 
is the operational domain characteristics of an ERP system. What you now have is a complete analytical domain that's now set on around the Horton data platform. The enablements to process data through synchronization, microservices. Again, we will show you the call of weather data that actually leaves, grabs the data from the analytics domain, and brings it in. We've even brought in the traffic data to actually overlay that data so you can physically see that information itself. But we're still not done. One of the highest opportunities was the embracement of the concept of blockchain itself. By leveraging the Horton data framework, particularly around the structures of data flow and the opportunities within the messaging queue, we now can collect the Kafka, the Kafka to the NiFi, and then back out to the Kafka to route specific messages based on the published subscribe architect itself. So with that, can you please go ahead and bring up the demo? This is a screen of one of our most popular products. This was built and released in production today. This is a complete design of a process that was broken for over 20 years. Why this is so popular is for the first time ever, shippers can send data to carriers in an automated way. And you're thinking to yourself, wow, this was the biggest success that you guys have. $4.9 billion in wasted time now have something that was completely automated to the uh, capabilities of tracking that. This was the year ago that we started discovering, what if I had the ability, which is one of the biggest problems, to bring in shippers and carriers together? This bid engage product was the first step. Donnie, go ahead and click on the map lanes. So I know that if I capture the data, I'm going to load certain pieces of data into the blockchain. We're going to use a concept called Hyperledger, Hyperledger Fabric inside the, the uh, IBM framework. We also are going to show you a little bit of Ethereum. This is a route done by that contract that Donnie had selected that shows you the location. Anheuser is not the example, but this is the one that I wanted to bring up and show. Go ahead and close this, Donnie. When Donnie hits that save button that he just hit, it's going to send the auto data to what's called the composer, that rest area. Remember the microservices that are done into that area that I just showed you a couple steps before that. Because of the NIFI configurations and the abilities to hit the Kafka, it auto-loaded things into the blockchain. If Donnie clicks on the contract, it enables you to actually see the physical data elements around volumes, the rates per mile the RPMs that he's going to physically lock into the blockchain concept. Donnie, let's show them a smart contract. Let's actually look at something that's physically real. This is a design off of the asset transfer. So remember, I selected the contract. I know the route in which it's going to go. I then drop it down to a physical smart contract. You've heard the concept of smart contracts. There's over 43 separate contracts that now reside on that data framework, all because of the power of knowing your data and making your data very thin and very actionable itself. So now that I have this in a smart contract between a carrier and a shipper, let's say Anheuser-Busch is the shipper. It has several carriers, let's call that US Express. I now have the capabilities of making those two agreements completely immutable. They have agreements of what freight, when it will be moved, and now here was the ad additional items. Donnie, bring up the freight area. This now UI interface sits on top of the entire framework. Messaging queues get loaded up there. If you click on the contracts, Donnie, that we had just covered, Let's go ahead and bring up one of those. This is the Dallas to the Cleveland one. It made a live call and it told me through the microservices that I've completed of all the commitments off that contract that you just saw, we have completed 317 of the contracts itself. As you can see, we've got 500 that we're still tracking to. I've got that now secure. There is no more debate and argument between these two individuals themselves. I funneled it, Kafka can move it, I now have it on what's called on the network or on chain. But you know what, we're still not done. Donnie, drop down to the freight. This is where we're going with the a, with a supply chain itself. I know that same contract is moving Budweiser beer. I have to keep that at a certain refrigerated temperature. 
embedded in that blockchain contract, because I have the interoperability within the message layers, I can tell you that that freight pallet on that truck has to be kept at a certain temperature. If it violates that certain particular temperature, I now can get an error report that actually indicates to me something is going on. Now, we've got the contract. We have the data that's been processed and moved throughout the dissemination of the, of the freight allocation. I could tell you that it's in transit. But our customers came back to us and said, hey, that's great, Tim but where's the visibility in this thing? I get it, it's on blockchain. Matter of fact, thank you for so much because we're not arguing anymore. We bought a company and integrated the product line of the data services into a company called 10.4, that's part of the Trimble family. I brought up a subset of the data itself. These are physical, real life data that has been moved today or currently in transit. Donnie, bring up the one in Tampa. Let's look at, take a look at him. Here's a couple things you're going to notice. Now, again, again, this, this is data that's been fed into the, the demo system, but this is live data, so you can see the example. This, doc, this particular thing has actually finished. The dotted lines are the IoT sensors that called back into from the truck into the knock and actually brought that back out. But here's a couple things. You see that black line that's on there? Remember Donnie when he made that first tab he committed to that smart contract. That's the black line that that trucker should have fouled. Doesn't look like he fouled that, does it? It looks like he went around the route and he actually looked at something different. So I'm saying to myself, looking at this data, if I was Anheuser-Busch, I'm like, well, what did this tell me? What happened to it? Donnie, go ahead and bring in the weather data. When Donnie has clicked on this weather data, this data runs out through the NIFI actually has the consumptions of free weather information. I now can overlay the transactional related data about when it's moved, the sensor of the data, but more importantly, third party data. But you know what? Something still is funny on that, Donnie. Let's bring up traffic. So now, I not only can bring in weather, I can bring in traffic. I have the last obstacle to actually try to analyze this information. Here's the last thing that I want to hit on this thing. Before I came up here, I got an alert, which is red on that. Something happened to that truck that's matched against that smart contract. Go to the temp history, Donnie, and tell us what happened during that transit. Whoa, wait a second. Something happened. Remember, I knew on the contract that it had to operate within a certain window of a temperature. Because I now have the direct connections from the sensor data into the knock configuration, I can tell you the exact movement. Every one of those little dots correlate to the pins that you have up there. Sometime within that side, that 48th model or the 50th model, I actually went out of compliance within the refrigeration. Now, as you're looking at this product, what I may do is get out of this particular box and close this, Donnie. I may actually go down here and see I know it's refrigeration, I know that when it was moved, and here is the product SKUs that are physically being tracked within the pallet configurations. The number of Budweiser's that are coming in, you have over a thousand Budweiser's, you have bush light that's coming in. So I may not have attacked this, but Anheuser may look at this and go, but that's the freshness that I'm trying to do, Tim. It has to operate in terms of where we're bringing into the product line itself. So with that, I know I'm running out of time. I see the flashing lights. I hope you've looked at something that's real. This is something I want to end with this. No longer do you have Hortonworks the capability. What you have in front of you is the ability to actually innovate and do something productive that you have with your data. That's where we need to go as a community. The ability is there. It's the risk and the opportunities to produce stuff that's in production that will physically make a difference in today's life. Thank you so much.